Hi, this is Clark from V12 IC Pack, and I've got some great news uh, for people with the Mercedes V12 engines on your 600 series cars from late 99 through 2012. And uh, if you have found this uh, video because you were Googling the uh, voltage transformer or ignition control module, or maybe even put in the part number of Mercedes, which is the 0001500058 or a 158 or a 258. And basically what you've got is a uh, unit with a plastic cover. And this cover was used late 99 through 2002. And uh, in 2003, they kept it a black cover, but the part number went from 0058 to 0158 for about a year. And then um, late 2003, 2004, they went to the metal cover and uh, it became the 0258. We don't worry about the last two little digits on the end, the Q1. And um, basically, these units are both the same. Um, originally, on the, uh, the first units, they had an extra FET, which is a special kind of transistor, and they were using it as a diode. And uh, they left it in there for the first couple of years, realized it wasn't doing anything, they didn't need it. I think it was probably just a, a precautionary measure, and they pulled it out. So these units, regardless of, of uh, what you've got in your car, they all functionally work the same. Uh, just kind of curious to know, though, though, if you've got a metal cover on an 01 and you bought the car used, um, it's already been replaced. And uh, if you've got a plastic one in an 07 or 08, it's, it's been replaced, and, and uh, they just probably got it off of eBay or someplace, which is why they've got, theoretically, the wrong one. But they all work fine. So, uh, when I get done with this video here in a few minutes, uh, hopefully you're going to feel like you just ate a box of Happy Pills. We've got some great uh, information and uh, some serious new upgrades for these units that um, it's, it's pretty significant uh, for what we've done, which is going to help you as the owner of your V12 considerably. So there's two things that uh, will ruin these, and we'll take a closer look over on the bench in a minute. But heat is one of them. We all know how hot these things are from the engine heat coming up, and it, it literally will roast uh, the parts inside to the point that uh, it becomes dysfunctional. And then the other thing that happens to them is if the coil pack shorts out, uh, it draws too much current, it's going to feed back into uh, the voltage transformer, which is really a power supply. You can think of these as a power supply for the coil packs. Literally, there's two halves. You could almost cut a line down this thing and one half to one side, one half to the other. Um, and, uh, you know, you probably played around with a circuit in the house with an outlet or a... Um, light switch trying to rewire it or something like that. You know what happens when you touch that positive wire to a ground, it sparks on you. It arcs. And very often, if it was a good arc, you're going to blow the circuit breaker back on your uh, panel on the house. Well, on the car here, there is no circuit breaker. So if you've got any kind of a short on the coil pack, it feeds back into this unit, finds the weak link, and blows it. And typically, when these things blow, it's not one component. It's four, five, six different components. Uh, as the current has, has ripped back through these things and taken them out. So, uh, let's go over to the bench and let me show you uh, what we've done. And it's pretty significant and um, I, I think uh, it's going to be a huge help for people out there. Okay, so I've had a video posted for um, about a year and a half now. Um, it explains how to open these up and take a look at them. This is one that just came back as a core. Um, I took the screws out already. And I, I, I kind of got the, the top loose, so I didn't have to work at it um, too hard here. So when I take the tops off of these, the, the plastic ones, they break very, very easily. So you need to be careful uh, even trying to get them off because you're really not going to be able to do anything once you take them off. It's just a matter of curiosity. But I use a, a small pry bar or a biggest screwdriver you can find. And if you come in on the side here and start to get it loose, and then if it starts to go, you can come up on this, this arm here and be able to lift it up. So this one's still got the, um, the RTV. And sometimes if, if it's, it still won't come, you can take a razor blade and get it in here and just cut that RTV. I could just pull this up and it will it'll open up. And... Um, Typically, if you open it, this is what you're going to see. You've got this, this gooey stuff here, and this is a, a potting compound. And uh, the only reason this is really here is to keep people like me from messing with this stuff. But um, what's going on with this, you can see here, if I drew a line down the middle of this thing here, we've got the same components on this side as we have on this side. And unfortunately, what Mercedes did was not even use automotive quality components. These are um, consumer uh, quality components for the most part. 
these large capacitors here, for example, um, if you see, if you open yours up and you see um, like a, you know, a bubble on here, that means this thing has definitely gotten hot. And the way these are designed is that if they get too hot, what it is is there's a, these are called electrolytic caps. And there's a dielectric material that has been pressurized with a, a, a gel that's um, electrolyte gel and it's impregnated into that dielectric material and then it's wrapped with foil different layers uh, to come up with the capacitance qualities that you're after from the capacitors so when these things get hot I mean imagine this thing uh, if you wanted to keep these parts warm what was the first thing you do you you put insulation around all the parts to keep them hot and that's exactly what this gel is doing it's getting hot and then it just keeps that hot heat around these parts and just continues to roast them even when you've got the car shut off but anyway if that gel gets so hot if the inside of these caps get so hot that gel will actually start to vaporize and of course we all know that when vapor happens you start to build up pressure and the tops of these are actually meant to um, kind of kind of split and open up to relieve not to relieve the pressure but it, it makes the case bigger um, these guys here the paper actually came right off and you'll note these here are flat they don't they don't wobble these are like a top they just <laughs> so the domes are blown on the I mean they've actually puffed up enough that it, it raised the top these are obviously bad uh, if you see yours with some bubbles on them they've definitely gotten really hot it's not to say that they're bad or not but they've definitely gotten hot so um, that's all you can kind of do you can just kind of look at this thing and see if these <laughs> this one has bubbled up as well and I happen to know um, I've had the meter on this one and I can tell from what the meter is doing and I put it on the car and the way it drove I knew that this cap was going bad on me um, but anyway that's all you're gonna be able to tell from once you get in here now one thing I didn't discuss earlier with is I don't do an upgrade I mean not a upgrade but a, um, a repair a rebuild service on your unit the issue being um, is that if if it were just a part like this that went bad, it'd be okay. But we don't know what's going to be wrong with it. This is one that I opened up the other day, and underneath this cap, you can see where the cap it it it, it I'm sure the the dome on it had gone, but also they can they'll leak the electrolyte out the bottom, which is basically an acid, and it actually etched right through the solder mask, which is the green stuff, and exposing the copper. And this one's probably going to be okay. We can we can doctor up a solder mask, but if it sat long enough, it would eat right through the copper traces. That even looks like a break right there on that trace. So if the traces get eaten through, we're done. I mean, this thing is just becomes a doorstop at that point. So that's one reason that I don't uh, say that we will rebuild your unit because if we run into something like this, um, it, it could be unrepairable. Um, and while I'm talking about it. I'll move on to this uh, little guy here. This part is uh, it's a two-channel output semiconductor component, and it's got eight little legs on both sides. So there's 16 legs on this part, and that's three sixteenths of an inch long. So imagine three sixteenths of an inch long, eight pins on each side, and this is basically uh, kind of the heartbeat for this unit. And when I was talking before, if there's a short on your coil pack and it and it comes through. If it takes these guys out, um, this isn't something that most mortals can replace. It has to be done by hand. All these parts have to come off the board around here so that's, that the best of the best <laughs> technicians um, can actually get in here and replace this part. It's, it's really tough to do. And uh, fortunately, I still got contacts in Silicon Valley, and I've, I've got people that can handle this at their job sites that will do this for me. But I have to save them up. I can't go down with one or two. I've got to go down with, you know, 30, 40, 50 of these things so they can kind of kind of get a rhythm going and get them replaced. So that's another reason that I don't do the rebuild on your particular unit because if it comes in and we've got this kind of a problem or if one of these guys is blown, we're done. There's nothing I can do. So rather than pretend that I'm going to rebuild your unit, I've got others that we've rebuilt, we've tested them, and they're ready to go, and we'll do an exchange. So I do need your core. Um, and hopefully we can save it and rebuild it for uh, for the next person. So what we're doing on these, this is one now that, that has been uh, finished. So we've removed the high voltage capacitors and replaced them with automotive uh, quality components. And what that means is they can take the heat for about 50% longer. Um, they're 105 degrees C, but the fact that uh, we can get an extra 4,000 
hours, the, the soaking, the heat soak on these components, they'll maintain their integrity for 4,000 longer, hours longer than the original. So what that says is the reliability of these components that we replaced is going to be substantially higher than what came out from Mercedes originally. Now the other thing that we've done, you might notice here, these are electrolytic caps as well, and these things leak like crazy when they, when they get hot and they blow and they ooze all over those little PWM chips I was just talking about, the pulse wave modulator chips. And um, we're completely take these guys out, replace them with, and, and these are tantalum capacitors, and these are essentially solid state components. There's no, um, there's nothing inside of them <laughs> to, to get hot and, and blow the parts and leak and anything else. So these are not electrolytic uh, components. They're solid state parts. So we've replaced those as well. And these guys are basically filters for our PWM chips. And the PWM chips, they're pretty interesting. I mean, they're a dual, pa dual output channel component. And basically what they're doing is they're creating a signal that is going to be the 23-volt line on your coil pack. And it's going through this inductor which is taking a tiny little pulse. It's actually going through an array of some diodes and some transistors that are on the back of the board and resistors and uh, going through that array and getting a nice signal, feeding it through the FETs. The FETs turn on and off, discharge the field on these inductors, and then into the big capacitors and we get a nice uh, voltage output. In these case, the 23 volts. And on these guys, it's the 180. Um, these FETs, the cycle of these guys is 22,000 times per second. So every second, these FETs are turning on and off 22,000 times, collapsing the field of this inductor. And that's the nice, steady uh, voltage line that's going off to your coil packs. Now, um, of significance is the fuse now that we've got in line here as well. So this is on the 180 volt line, not the 23, but the 180 volt line. From the coil pack. So if if there's a, a heavy enough consumption of current from your coil packs, i.e. a short on the coil pack, it's going to get fed back through this line into this fuse. This fuse is only 750 milliamps, so it's three quarters of one amp, 750 milliamps. Um, and if this fuse blows, it's going to protect all the components on this board. Nothing's going to. It's going to come in and it's going to get stopped right there. Nothing else on this board is going to get destroyed. Um, which is which is significant, and the other thing that's kind of cool uh, with the design of the car, nothing that we, that we did, that if this fuse blows on this 180 volt line, the car will run on the 23 volt line like it's in limp mode. So it'll you know it'll go up to 2,000 RPM, um, and then and then you know it won't go any faster than that. But at least if the fuse blows, you're not going to get you're not going to die out on the freeway or something like that. The car will go into limp mode. And then what you want to make sure you do is check this fuse. And you'll need to use uh, an ohmmeter. I don't really have the right contacts on this one here. But if we switch this over to ohms, I wasn't really prepared to do this. But you don't even have to take it out of the car. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely unplug your harness coming into this guy. And without taking the fuse out, I should be able to get on the metal here. Or not. There we go. See, then the needle goes all the way. So I've got continuity, so we know this fuse is good. So if, um, and that's the same as touching these leads together, right? Same thing. So if we're touching the ends of our fuse and our needle's not moving, we know that fuse is blown. You'll get two extra with the unit, replace them. And if it blows again, it's your, it's your coil pack that's doing it. Your coil pack's bad, and um, send it in. We'll rebuild it, take care of it, and you will have saved yourself the price um, and the headache of troubleshooting. Because <laughs> the car goes into limp mode, and you're getting a code. And typically with these voltage transformers, you're uh, you're going to get a P0301, 02, or 3046. And that's going to be the left side, as you're looking at the car, the left side. But now I'm really going to make it confusing because that's actually the right side because it's always viewed from the driver's standpoint looking forward, right? So it's the right side of the car. That's 1 through 6. And the left side, which is 7 through 12. Normally, if you're getting a code that's all six cylinders, you might as well flip a coin. It could be the coil pack. 
it could be the voltage transformer. Now, if you've got one of my voltage transformers with a fuse and the fuse is blowing, then you know it's the coil pack. It's a done deal. It's not the voltage transformer. Um, once in a while, we do see where just one cylinder will come up and it turns out to be the voltage transformer. Uh, and it's not the coil pack. And typically, if, if number two is missing, you're thinking coil pack, you're thinking spark plug, you're thinking fuel injector, it could be the voltage transformer. So, uh, that might be more information than you want to know about the voltage transformers, but we've got a good handle on them now. Um, we started out by completely stripping the components off the boards, and we were able to tra track down and trace every single input on this thing, uh, which got us to the point that we knew exactly what everything was doing. So we knew what we had to do to make this thing right so that you've actually got an upgraded component. Um, I'm going to offer a two-year warranty, which is the same warranty that Mercedes gives when you buy these brand new from the factory. The difference is if you put a bad coil pack on your brand new voltage transformer Mercedes and blow it out, they're going to say, sorry, Charlie. Uh, in my case, you blow the fuse, and um, that's going to be it. So you're out, you're out a buck for a new fuse. Okay, hope uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and um, we're ready to go with these. I've got uh, a whole bunch in stock now, and um, I've certainly got more to go through and and, uh, and rebuild as well. Okay, so when you get your new voltage transformer, ignition control module, whatever your terminology is, uh, your new upgraded unit will come in its own special box, and uh, package and such to protect it. It will come with a label on the front here indicating that there are fuses inside and if the unit is not working properly, uh, make sure you check these fuses. You have to use an ohmmeter. A lot of these have ceramic fuses and you can't see through. And on the ones that have the glass fuses, the filament is so fine it's hard to see. Um, so it, it could be there, it could be blown depending on how good your eyesight is. So we'll also ship these with two extra fuses, probably put them in the glove box so they're with the car. But this will prevent uh, voltage transformer from being taken out by a uh, defective coil pack. And that's going to save you anywhere from a used one on eBay for 450 bucks or a new one from the dealer for 800 and whatever they get for them these days. So, uh, thanks for watching this and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.